Hey guys, today we're doing book cover design. We're going to do a vampire novella. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited because we don't often get to do... Uh, you're not going to see a lot of videos of book cover design, especially of Big Five published works, because the cover reveal is really important to publishers for some reason. And so this self-published author has smartly commissioned me to uh, do him a book cover. And that's what I'm going to do. And um, the first step in book cover design is sort of seeing what's popular within the genre. And although uh, the big published works, you know, Twilight comes to mind. I've never read Twilight, but the covers are expertly done. And they're done through a lot of photo manipulation. And I am usually, an, I'm an outside the box kind of designer and thinker. I see that everyone is using basic photo manipulation to not create works of art. But to just add this sort of like evocative, romantic, uh, kitschy thing that is pervasive in the genre. And I'm going to take that the other direction so that his his novella stands out. And I can't think of any way of going further in the direction than to do like polygonal, minimalist art. Uh, I I sort of thought about the, uh, the concept of the... There's a very famous cover of the Cormac McCarthy book, The Road, that's very minimal. Um, and evocative and it, it does a really good job of setting up the story and I wasn't even a huge fan of the book So the setting for this cover is going to be a creepy forest We're going to have a male warlock character that is uh, in love with a young You know a 19 year old sort of female vampire that has black hair with red streaks And I like that idea because black and red and white are definitely those colors say vampire Right? They say Vampirella in the in the comic book world, or they say Dracula, or something like that. So that is uh, that is super helpful. And then Creepy Forest, good. That sort of evokes the evokes the the horror mentality of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just try and just silhouette with sort of a, a moody purple color, just sort of silhouette, maybe something centered. And I have this. I was thinking about using the circle because they always have an apple uh, I'm not sure what the symbolic reason is for the red apple maybe because it looks somewhat bloody and it also has curves like this is just my I'm just spitballing like it has curves like a you know like the female butt or something it's sort of a it's got an evocative shape and it's also blood colored is that why they use it in vampire stuff I don't know um, but we're not going to put an apple but I thought about putting something round in the center of the cover that is maybe a red color or something so uh, first things first, a uh, creepy forest. So we're going to try and use like a vanishing point in the center here and just or maybe, maybe a little higher. So if we have something like this and then imagine that we had sort of, you know, you have these things hanging down and maybe the, maybe this is the moon and as we get further back, you're going to want the colors to get lighter. And then that way these things in the foreground will kind of read like creepy, you know, hanging moss thing. And there's some kind of... I don't know what color it would be. Just kind of get a basic layout. Just get a sense of how this thing will look. So this gives us a lot of space down at the bottom here. For uh, the the book actually has a a title, so we have a we have room down here to put uh, it's like a nightmare or something novella and then the author's name and then in the center here we would have oops. and let's change the color of this thing
give me just a second. Now I'm going to clip a layer to the top here. I don't know if it's going to be black or what. But this is like freshman. That's not going to work. I guess we could do it. And then the characters could be here. I don't know if I'm crazy about that. And then we could also do something like let's just imagine this is the long bridge of a nose. So there's some type of bad guy whose eyes could be back in the trees there. And you wouldn't have the uh like looking down because they're they're being stalked by something in the forest. Hmm. Or it could even be I gotta look at all the information, but the problem is this title is so long that it really eats up a lot of the information on the screen and everything behind it is gonna be pushed back. So I don't know. Maybe get a good looking cover and then or something resembling a good looking cover. Rewind that. Hmm. Ooh, good idea. What if the eyes are here, right? You know, you have some kind of evil eyes in the back here. And then they are actually running towards the camera as if they're being stalked and then they're you know locked hand in hand and rushing this way there was a weird female form this leg here and then this leg Then it could be do 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 do. That doesn't feel right though. We would have to kind of need to mess with the rule of thirds there. Hmm. That looks better though, right? Because now we know the title is Freshman Hunt. We have. I think that this is freshman in college. I think they're they were described to me as being eighteen or nineteen years old. Uh, and then we're actually going to get to see their faces. They're being chased down in this creepy wood. And then we can have a moon or we can offset it or something. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Let's talk about why I'm going to do the things that I'm going to do. First of all, we don't have the advantage of being of this being a, a, a hugely established author. So there's no credibility going into it. So we need to tell everybody what this thing is. We need to, we need to, to sh tell more than show. We need to be a little bit uh, more forceful with with what's going to happen in the story. Um, we need the girl to read vampire. There's so a lot of covers out there that read like trashy stock photo romance novel and not like vampire. Like I 
I don't know. Like, I just know that I don't want, like, if I were going to buy a, a sports book, right, I wouldn't want it to just be some big bodybuilder dude to represent a football player. He should have a helmet. So by the same way, like, I want Vampire and this Warlock guy to read as if they are fantasy characters. You know that this is a fantasy story and not just some stock photo that you watched a couple YouTube videos about Photoshop and put some fancy effects in and then you called that a book cover. That's not evocative of anything. Those are tricks, or not, not even tricks, they're tools that an artist can use to improve a work. But uh, the idea that, that people are gonna know what your story is about if you're not a visual storyteller is a little bit crazy to me. So as there's so many, like Amazon is just filled with books. There's a billion books on Amazon. You got to find a way to stand out. And the best way to do it is great book cover design. It doesn't matter what you spent. Like it'll be worth it. All right. So let me look at the the actual specifications of this thing, and then I'm going to I'm going to pause and let you know what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to go walk the dogs, and I'm going to come back with a with a better concept. And then we'll just kind of do this video in pieces. So the author says the main concepts I wanted to include would be creepy forest and the two main characters, which are the girl doesn't read like girl and the warlock and the girl she's described as having black hair with red streaks so that's good and he is described as being bluish green now that means i have to decide whether he's going to be blue we don't want to turn this into a, if you're going to be minimal you can't just include all the colors of the rainbow this moon is going to be blue or green and you don't want the you don't want blue green red black and white to to fight it's perfect you could you could have any combination of colors but you can't have all the colors all the time uh when you're when you're going minimal with like a polygon thing this isn't an impressionist painting that is literally every color you can imagine a little bit here a little bit there or this isn't george surratt and pointillism uh we want this thing at you're always going to hear me talk about this when i talk about book cover design is that at 200 by 300 it needs to make sense you need to and hopefully you can uh, there's a lot of text on this, so I don't think that we're gonna any. But 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 I don't think that we're gonna be able to get all of it readable. But what I want readable is Freshman Hunt. That says at the very least some type of fantasy thing. Freshman Hunt, creepy eyes. Uh, you at least you'll know it's your right genre, right? If you see it in a suggested listing or in a search result or something. We want you to to click on it. <clears throat> all right. If you think you can add the villain, go ahead. I'm gonna try. I am gonna try. So, I've got sort of a basic layout. It looks like a disaster right now. I'm gonna make sense with some type of prototype made out of polygons. And then once I have it, I will hit record again and I'll show you exactly how I did it. Uh, I tend not to think very creatively when I'm talking because I am I just never shut up. So, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pause. I'll be back once my dogs are walked. I thought I'd pick this back up with just a little bit more concepting. I probably spent another 10 minutes or so just putting in some different styles of quote unquote creepy trees, you know, just using a round brush and seeing what kind of shapes I could make. Uh, I kind of like the perspective. I like thinking about this as a bent path moving upwards. And so I will, I'll start, I'll place the trees up like that. Um, I think that that swoop gives it a bit, a bit more of a creepy feel. You can ignore the color palette completely, especially when working minimally, because it's so easy to just make huge user universal changes. I only have four colors here. I could select any given one of them and change them to whatever I wanted. Um, I found this picture of Justin Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried online. And while I'm not going to use this pose, um, I just wanted a picture of two people running just so I can get an idea of the scale because in in this path i could i could make this path you know as wide as a as a city street and make the figures well here until you have people in there you really don't know the scale i mean i could easily do this 
but you're not going to get to get an idea of what they are, even if you have these big creepy eyes. And uh, I think I'm going to find a way to just sort of overlay the big eyes on the forest and, and create a symmetry. And I sort of like this uh, very classic, very easy centered thing. I just have to decide how big I want the figures and then I'll start drawing out the figures and uh, maybe I'll lay in some text to see as I definitely want to have their faces uh, very, very, very prominent and the expressions on their faces, even though it's going to be minimal and that will uh, really determine kind of where the text is going to go and how the, how the piece is going to look. But uh, remember, I'm just always thinking in terms of readability. I'm just assuming uh, since I don't know this author, um, uh, Anthony Avina, heck of a nice guy. And if you like vampire fiction, I would ch definitely check out his stuff. But uh, the main thing here is I want this to I want this to be different and to just like scream vampires, vampire romantic couple being chased. And uh, that's not too much of an ask. I don't I, I think that that I'll definitely be able to do that in a way that uh, is convincing and super cost effective, because uh, all when it's all said and done, even I probably would have spent 45 minutes to an hour doing this piece. If, uh, if I wasn't talking and, and gabbing into the microphone like I am. So uh, not it's not too complicated, but I, it's turning out okay. I even sort of like the color palette that we have on. Some of these, like this right here has a, a bit of a, a woozy, mossy green quality to it, even though it's very desaturated. Um, so maybe I can play with that palette and come up with kind of a blue and green, and then we'll just have her red streaks in her hair, and then this guy can be blue and green and because uh, he's a, a kind of an otherworldly figure. And hopefully that will all play nice together. And if not, you know, it's better for you if I come upon some challenges and have to tell you about it. But uh, let me uh, work on this some more and I will come back once we have a real prototype that we can start adding detail to and really uh, fidgeting with. Here is another 10 or 15 minutes worth of work. Uh, starting to take shape. I wanted to show you this stage because it's creepy. It doesn't look good whatsoever. Uh, I tried to to use that that photo, some of the poses in it, and the male pose was kind of working for me. So I, I I did something similar to that, but the the female pose wasn't. So uh, I'm I'm in the process of making some changes and changing her angle, and I want a bit of her side exposed. And I don't know, we'll move around this a little bit and kind of figure out her hair. But uh, I just, you know, chucked in a couple faces after, uh, you know, in 10 seconds or whatever, and it looks really, really terrible. And I think that a lot of times if, you, if you're not an artist and you're doing your own design, you get really, really frustrated when something you clearly know it looks wrong and that's not how you want it. But you have to understand that <laughs> art doesn't look good until it's finished. And in some ways it's never finished, right? That's what makes it art. But it's not supposed to, it's okay that this looks terrible and like the worst cartoon you've ever seen and worse than South Park. Um, not that South Park is bad. It's just, you know, visually not super good. So I'm right now I'm playing with colors. I'm trying to figure out how to get that. If I want the bad guy's face, maybe in the background and, uh, and then put his eyes in, but this, uh, the color palette really, uh, is starting to take shape. I don't know what we're going to, I just have some flesh tones here. I don't know what we're going to do here, but th uh, this is starting to work for me if I can incorporate some kind of desaturated greens and sell this uh, this creepy forest as a creepy forest. And we'll probably redraw all this stuff since it was just kind of hacked in there. Um, but when you're working minimalistically, you can't, you can't do some of the other, like if you're painting, if you're doing a, a concept piece, like a concept painted book cover or something, you can photo bash things in to get textures and values from other places. But here, we you can't really do that. You don't want any of that variation. You want everything to be one solid color in big chunks. So uh, I'm going to work. I'm going to continue to work this up. I'm going to get some text on there. And then uh, I may end up doing it later tonight. I don't know if I'm going to, if I feel like doing it right now. And then once we have that, um, so I might be dressed differently if I shower. <laughs> once we have that, we'll start uh, getting some uh, some actual detail in here and uh, kind of building these these characters out so that uh, they look correctly and then we can start moving in the elements and and really flushing this thing out and making it look like a book cover so yeah so here's the initial design 
this isn't the I wouldn't call this the first uh, the first pass at it but I've got a definitive look for her and some details that I can click on and off and add as many as I like or delete them easily uh, I've got a shape for him that I like and a shape for her that I like uh, I think it even when you when you take it down you see that there's a, a sort of uh, fantasy looking couple that are running from something I may end up putting oops, it's, uh, Especially this is this is what we started with. I may end up putting the bad guy in here somehow, or maybe some type of silhouette way back here with some glowing eyes. And I'm definitely going to redo some of these trees and stuff and add some some shrubbery. This is just some scribbling that I was doing. Uh, and then I'm going to try and lay in the text. So <clears throat> my initial idea here was that this would be like the big eye in the sky, you know, like as if it were looking down upon them. I couldn't make it look quite right, so maybe we'll have this, and this can be suggestive of an eye. It is kind of an eye shape. We can even do something in the background, something like that, to, to you know, so that somebody, some eyes might read it like an eye, and other people won't. Um, but these are going to be the star of the show, and plus you're going to have text across here, and text across the bottom, and uh, I don't, I'm not sure where else, but I think that this is... Uh, and remember, this is just a first draft. Um, I'm sure that the author is going to have some some feedback, and um, maybe I'll add some details to his face, or I don't know. But to me, this this is uh, even even though they're in plain clothes, and he had mentioned that he wanted his warlock guy like in a button down. They were in kind of you know kind of I don't want to say hipsters, but um, to me, this you know she certainly reads goth chick. I'm going to work on the the color of her skin and stuff and kind of you know it's really easy once you once you get all these elements in place to just swap these colors out to whatever you want um, but really what I'm looking for is value I like the value difference between the uh, the ground here and the background this certainly reads like some kind of path these look like vines and trees this looks like a moon or an eye which is what I'm going for so now I just gotta bring it all together and also, maybe maybe get one of these big trees behind her arm. See how his arm pops out here? It gives the piece depth. Um, and if we had a little a little dude way back here, I mean, like way on the top of the, the crest of the road, you know, something very. It's gonna be tough to even get like a cloaked figure, and you're certainly not gonna be able to see it. Or actually, you know what? You know what you could do here. Let me show you. This is where all that, you know, that all those special effects and stuff that you that you heard about come into play, or that you can not that you heard about that you you look up on YouTube if you're not a uh, an artist professionally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an airbrush, and the airbrush no tool can make your work look more horrible than the airbrush when it's used wrong. So tread carefully. I'm going to crank back the opacity. I'm going to bring a layer up onto this background layer. I'm going to pin it to that layer. And I'm going to set it to screen. Actually, let's we're going to turn down the brush density. If we were going to do that, the background needs to be darker. Something like that could be highly suggestive of a bad guy in the distance, right? That's the case. If we were going to go that dark with it, which I don't want to go quite that dark.
Let's just say we were going to go that dark with it. If that's the case, then Feet get lost, but they're going to be covered up anyways. I can change the value of those. Notice how mentally at every stage I'm comparing the values everywhere uh, to make sure that, that this thing reads. You want these characters to be out front. And you can blur the whole background just like a tiny bit or add a huge overlay. Um, when you're totally done, the, the characters that you want in the foreground, you're going to want those out on a separate layer. That way you can make adjustments uh, to everything behind it at once and then uh, push stuff back. Now, I don't know what this guy is supposed to look like, so. But yeah, okay, uh, I'm gonna take a break for a little while. I'm going to find out what that dude is supposed to look like and then uh, we will go from there, okay. Herb.